So first of all, we want to say thank you to everybody for joining us tonight. We know this is uh, an important issue and an issue that a lot of people feel very passionately about in Lewis County. Um, we got some material that we'd like to get through um, at the top of the meeting and then um, you know, we'll turn it over to you folks for some comments and questions. So um, first I want to introduce the folks that are up here uh, with us this evening. We've got the Lewis County Board of Legislators from Harrisville, Phil Hathaway. From Beaver Falls, Lisa Berkeley. From Denmark, Jessica Mosher. From the Green, Lee Willard. From right here in Lowell, Dick Chartrand. From Watson, Andrew Morgan. From Turin, Josh Loker. From Lyons Falls, we have the Chairman Larry Dalhoff. Vice Chairman Tom Osborne could join us this evening. And from West Lyon, we have Jeff Long. So, this is the, the goal for this evening. We're going to hit some topics, and then as I said, uh, we'll turn it back over to you folks um, for your opportunity to, to weigh in as well. So, we're going to talk about you know, what is Rails to Trails. We'll make sure everybody's on the same page about what we're talking about. We're going to talk about why the county feels that investment is important at this time. We're going to talk about uh, what could be purchased, really the specifics of um, the deal that is on the table. Um, we'll talk about how the county will pay for it. We'll talk about the development process, you know, moving forward. And then there's a few other things that we'll talk about. And then, like I said, we'll have all the time. So, what is Rails to Trails? Uh, it's fairly straightforward. Rails to Trails is um, where you convert existing railways into uh, recreational trails. That's exactly what it sounds. It's extremely common across the United States. Uh, there's 27,000 miles of rail trails in the United States. And in fact, there's 1,300 miles of rail trail in New York State. In Lewis County, we already have eight miles of rail trail from Glenfield to Lyons Falls, um, which the county owns and maintains. Uh, there's also other rail trail investments happening in the North Country right now. There's a project underway to make a whole forest to Lake Placid. Um, you might have seen the news uh, earlier this week, the Sarah Lake portion of that um, project that was spread in the ground. Uh, and here's a, a picture from our blood rails to trails in the time to get an idea of, of the existing rail trail that we already have. So, why is rails to trails important and why does the county feel that now is the right time to make this investment? And it comes down to three pieces. The first is to promote community growth, the second is to promote community health, and the third is to respond to the needs of the community. So, we'll start with growth. Uh, you know, promoting uh, community growth. Rails to Trails has been something that's been on the agenda in Lewis County for many years. Many of you guys have been following that process for many years. Um, in fact, in 2009, when the World Legislators adopted the Comprehensive Plan, uh, one of the action items was to continue to pursue Rails to Trails because they understood the economic opportunity even in 2009 that this uh, project would bring. Uh, just to catch everybody up, like I said, it's been a while that we've been working on this. 2012 was the last time that there was an opportunity on the table. Um, we re-engaged with GBT in 2018-19, and we do have um, an additional uh, deal that's on the table uh, this morning. So, we're talking about community growth. Why is that important? Well, let's look at our peer communities. Let's look at what communities across Northern New York, rural Northern New York communities are facing. And this represents population loss from 2010 to 2020, okay? We have very similar demographics as Franklin, Kirkham, Oswego County. We have similar geography, we have similar economic bases. And those are communities that are not going well. They're losing people. When you're losing population, it's like trying to swim upstream. It's very difficult to maintain the assets that you have, it's very difficult to stabilize your tax base. It's a major problem. Um, Lewis County is lucky. We've only lost 2% in the last census. Um, and that's because we're in the bubble of Fort Drum. But uh, that doesn't mean that's necessarily going to continue that way. In fact, we you know for a fact that Lewis County is getting older, and the likelihood that we're going to lose more population is very strong. The median age in Lewis County has increased dramatically. Uh, over the last 10 years, we're getting older at a faster pace than New York State. We're getting older at a faster pace than the United States. In fact, Cornell University, they have a part, uh, Department of Applied Demographics, they project that by 2040, in Lewis County, for every one working age person, 
will have one non-working age person. So think about what that means in the economy. Think about what that means if you're trying to build manufacturing here in this town. Because we're having a very hard time maintaining the workforce. We're having a very hard time maintaining our tax base. And those things are fundamental to the health of a community. So it is important, we feel, to make investments that might help reverse those trends. Like I said, projected working age folks, that's not a good trend. Our working age population is projected to go down dramatically. Uh, and our projections of retirees is expected to go up dramatically. And look at our projected youth population, age 0 to 17, projected to drop dramatically. Now, I don't know if you're thinking, Brian, these are just projections. Well, let's look at the trends. Who's turning to school in all? This isn't a projection. This is right off the State Department of Education website. It is a fact that Lewis County does not retain any young families, and we do not have a next generation that is as strong as the previous. In Lavalo Academy, so, so this is 2000, okay? 2000 school enrollment to 2020, and then the State Education Department, because they know the class sizes now, can project a little bit ahead into 2026. So this is from 2000 to 2026 projected. Lavalo Academy school enrollment. Down 22%. Beaver River, down 22%. Airsville, down 33%. Copenhagen, almost 30%. South Lewis, over 30%. So again, this is not a projection. This is a reality and something that our community is currently dealing with. The second reason we feel this is important to invest in our community is because of community health. Uh, Lewis County's population health is, is not the strongest. Um, we are in the top five, maybe a bit of an understatement, we are in the top five um, in the entire New York State for um, adolescent and adult obesity. We're in the top five in New York State for heart disease. We're in the top five in New York State for high blood pressure and diabetes. Often, we rank number one in these categories across the state. We are, unfortunately, number one in mental health and suicide rates. Um, number one in the state. So it is imperative that we invest in opportunities for folks to get outside, enjoy the beautiful community that we have here, and make more healthy choices for their lifestyle, for both their physical health and their mental health. The third reason we believe this is important is because we're responding to community needs. We asked the community what they would like to see here in this community, and they told us. They told us through consistent polling. Jefferson Community College Center for Community Studies has been doing polling in Lewis County for over 15 years. They are certified by the American Association of Public Polling Research. And uh, they are using the same scientific methods that you see on polls all across the United States. They claim to the big leagues and we got them right here um, in our community, which is pretty great. So, what have people said? We asked people, 2019 specifically, we asked them, do you support the development of more non-motorized trails for walking, hiking, and biking? Eight or seven percent said yes. We asked you specifically, do you support the conversion of existing railroad beds or tracks into public recreational multi-use trails? Eighty-one percent said yes. They do support that. We also asked if they support the development of more ATV snowmobile trails for motorized vehicles. Seventy-four percent said yes. We asked again in 2022. Very specifically, even more specific than in 2019, we ask people, do you agree or disagree with this statement? I support county government efforts to convert existing railroad beds and tracks to multi-use public recreational trails, both motorized and non-motorized. That pretty much sums up the whole point. We ask folks and across the board, did not matter age, did not matter income level, didn't matter whether you identify as conservative or liberal, people across the board said yes, they support this initiative. So, why does the county feel this is the right time to, to invest in the trails? One, it's about stabilizing our tax base in the face of population loss and an aging population. We know that communities that have risk of trails see the investment in economic development. We know that. Uh, homes and communities that have trails increase in value. The National Association of Realtors, right on their website, it says, being next to a trail is likely to raise your property value 3 
25% and sometimes even as high as 15%. University of Cincinnati. The uh, study specifically on the rail trail that was built in the Miami Valley uh, in Southern Ohio. They said for every foot that a home is close to the trail, it gains about four dollars a value. Okay, so we know that this uh, building of trail networks can't work to help save lives. And for public health, there's plenty of studies. Obviously, about getting on tours and enjoying trails, but one study says 37% of trail users meet or exceed recommended weekly levels of physical activity. Um, and there's another reason why we have confidence in the support for work. So, despite the fact that we have uh, a reduction in population, and despite the fact that we really have a long run of you know, manufacturing jobs leaving, you know, I, I, don't, I think it's safe to say you know, our manufacturing um, you know, dairy economy has not grown in the last 10 years. We've had some hits. But despite that, we have seen growth in the full taxable value in Lewis County. So this represents all the properties across the whole county and what they're worth, according to their assessment. We're at about $2.5 billion. So if we're losing manufacturing, we're losing population, and folks are getting older, how do we explain 30% growth in our property tax rates? The answer is 34% of properties in Lewis County are now owned by people who don't live here. They come here because they want to enjoy our recreational assets. They want to come here to enjoy what we get to enjoy every day. Right? They come here to snowmobile, ATV, they want to get outside, they want to hunt, they want to enjoy time on the lakes. Um, and so we can be confident that the strategy is working and that people are you know, coming here and, and helping to stabilize the tax base. So let's talk about specifically um, the deal that's on the table and what the, the county is potentially looking to purchase from GBT. We're talking about 18.3 miles from Lava to Carthage. We're talking about 10.9 miles from Lava to Crogan, about a mile in the village of Lava, and there's half a mile of sightings in the village of Lions Falls. The total is about 31 miles away. The purchase price agreed to is $2.5 million. The county will retain, retain all track and other track materials. And the reason that matters is because the seal itself has value, that's salvage value. So we estimate salvage value of the seal about $1.4 million. That can help offset the purchase price. Um, we will inherit all existing easements. And uh, we're working with this part of the deal. We have a choice to take the bridge um, that goes into West Carthage. We're working with uh, West Carthage and the town of Champion to uh, and some engineers to figure out whether that's a good, uh, good deal. So, how will this be funded? Probably the most important part for most of the folks that are here. How's the county pay for it? So, this is the philosophy that the Board of Legislators are talking about. In Lewis County for quite some time. Um, I think it's you know generally agreed upon that you know, we're all on the same page. This is how we want to manage the county finances. And I know two buckets sound silly, but let's stay with you for a second. You've got county operations, okay? That is our day-to-day -day operations, our buildings, our grounds, our employees, the services we provide, all of that. Those operations need to be conservative, efficient, and sustainable. They need to be funded, and they need to stay within the scope of current government. We don't want the scope of government to grow in the new And we have. We've had, in fact, there are now jobs, several county jobs, since I've been here. Okay? That part of county operations is funded through property taxes, sales tax, and mortgage tax, and the operational revenue. We need to keep that conservative and sustainable, so we keep tax rates conservative and sustainable, which we have done. The second piece, which not every community is lucky enough to have, but Lewis County is, is another bucket for capital and community projects. This is stuff that is one-time expenses. It's not ongoing expenses. It doesn't increase the scope of county government. But it's one-offs and things we can do to invest in the physical plant, we can invest in the community. We pay for our debt with this money. And this money comes from pilots, right? Pilots are only very definitive at one time. We don't want to use the window money to add 25 jobs. That doesn't make sense. It's over now. 
the stimulus funds. You don't want to add jobs or build on another kind of program that's going to expire when the money runs out. Same thing with excess fund balance, excess sales tax, right? This is where we can spend money without raising taxes, but we can still do good stuff for the community. And this is where we're looking to fund this project. So, as I mentioned before, the American Rescue Plan Fund will use $1.5 million of the 5.2 that the county received uh, the American Rescue Plan funds to purchase the rail. The other million dollars will come from fund balance. Fund balance has changed quite a bit. I saw our former legislator, Ryan Moser, come in. We've done a little bit better since you're on the board, Ryan. <laughs> we went up a little bit. So we're at $24 million at this point, um, which is enough. It's a good level that we can afford a little bit of flexibility. Um, sales tax has continued to come strong. You can see the blue is what the county budget. That's what we rely upon to balance the budget. That would be that bucket number one, right? The green is what we perceived. And you can see every single year we have extra. That is what we go in bucket number two, right? In fact, if you look over the last 10 years, the county has collected an average of one and a half million dollars more in sales tax than we need to balance the budget. So we've got extra money, we budget conservatively in a way that allows us to make these additional community investments. And we've also shared some of that with the municipalities. In addition to all the services that we provide to the municipalities this year, we did send $500,000 in excess sales tax towards our towns and villages for other projects that they think are important. And then pilot payments, as I mentioned, that's also part of this special projects bucket. We get about $1.7 million in pilot payments. So, going forward, we've got all of that money that can be used to develop these trails. Um, but there's also, you know, this is just a cursory research done by our planning department. There's 17 state and federal grants out there right now for race and trail projects. The state and federal governments want the fund this, they want the money to rural areas like Lewis County. And um, I think we'll be very successful taking advantage of some of those programs going forward. So, how will we proceed with the development? Should the county move forward with this purchase? You know, what will be the next steps? Well, we want to be very clear. This is not a one-size-fits-all approach. We've been saying multi-use from day one because multi-use is what it's going to be. Each section of rail, of trail, will probably be better suited for a different type of development. It's not going to be one-size-fits-all. Also, we have to understand this is 30 miles of a rail trail. The county is not going to develop this all in the next year. This is going to take us 10 years. We're buying an asset that we can develop over time, okay? And each project, each section that we develop is going to have to be treated as its own project. Every time the county is added to our trail network, we've had to have environmental reviews, we've had to have public input sessions. We'll continue to do that. The conversation about rails to trails in Lewis County is just beginning. There's, it's going to take a lot of years, and we're going to have to have a lot more conversations about you know, what communities want regards to these assets. I think the important thing to remember is, you know, we're not, um, we're not going to commit tonight to this section will only be uh, one thing and this section will only be for another. The only thing we're talking about at this point is, is this asset, this 30 miles of trails, better in the hands of the county government, where we can leverage it and turn it into a community resource, or is it better with GPT, who's very unlikely to do anything that will sit for another that's really what we're talking about. So, some other details, folks, uh, stuff that I know folks are interested in. Um, oh, we're taking money off the tax rolls. Absolutely, we are. And I, we, we get the people are sensitive to that. Last year, GBT paid $11,300 in total taxes. That's county, school, town, village. $11,300 in total taxes. However, they charged local municipalities, towns and villages, $12,500 in easements for water lines that go under the rail, for sewer lines that go under the rail, for stormwater lines that go under the rail. Okay? So, yes, money's coming off the tax rolls, but in terms of net value to taxpayers, it's actually a game. What about crime on the trails? That's something that we've heard. I understand people are concerned about that. Absolutely. I would ask folks, you know, do some research, do your own research. There are literally dozens and dozens of 
studies about rails to trails and crime, trail on crime, or excuse me, crime that's on trails, um, they all come to the same conclusion. And this is one of the most robust studies. It's like 371 rail trails across the United States. And they found that crime is no more likely to occur on a rail trail than it is to occur any place else. Lewis County already has one of the lowest crime rates in New York State. Okay, so you're no more in danger on the rail trail than you are on the sidewalk, than you are on you know, the sewers. Our crime rate is the same. So, just to quote the conclusion of the study crime occurs on roads, parking lots, and shopping malls, office buildings, airports, and zoos. However, no one would rationally argue that we shouldn't build any of these because crime will occur there. The same should be true for rails, right? There's no evidence that suggests rails will promote more crime than our exists. So, here's a concern that we hear often as well. There's conflicting views about what this asset could be used for. Can the rail be used for, for a slope motor line? Could the rail be used for future industrial development? Based on the current conditions, we got a couple of you know, photos here, that would be very difficult. To build a pedestrian bridge over the swash out in New Bremen, the fish on the left, that's not too expensive. To build a full-scale locomotive bridge back to that spot is going to be right? The same is true for the swash out that's in the town of Now, this is just from, from us folks, you know, walking you know, a few miles of trail. If you get into this thing, there are dozens and dozens of washouts and spots that require attention. Now, to turn into a pedestrian trail, it's easy. It's not very expensive. To turn into a full-scale, you know, locomotive, there's going to be a lot of money, a lot of effort um, that, you know, I don't, I'm not sure this can be asked. Other details, um, like I mentioned, so it's going to be a dimension. So the $12,500 of easements per year, the county obviously is not going to charge um, the municipalities for that. We're not going to charge them once more. You know, if we were a part of the rails, we would not charge the communities. There's some businesses in there as well, some farms that you pay to cross. Um, we would obviously wipe those out. Um, another concern that we hear is liability versus to adjacent landowners. Um, and John, I think that's a few words of county attorney to address that issue. Hi. So I want to um, just say that Hazard, 
if there's one that exists, then there really is no issue in terms of additional liability to a homeowner. And you can check that all with your, your insurance carriers as well, because they don't understand that. As I mentioned, the estimated value of steel uh, is about $1.4 million. Um, so, next steps. Uh, we will have a resolution that will be uh, weighed in and, uh, uh, by the General Services Committee on November 15th. Um, if that moves forward, if it's that move forward with that, we'll move forward to the November 22nd board meeting. So, public comments. We've talked enough. Uh, time for us to do some listening. Um, just a few ground rules. Uh, we are asking folks to keep it five minutes per speaker. There's a bit of a crowd here tonight. We want everybody to have the opportunity um, to be heard. Okay? Uh, questions? We ask that you know, we're not going to get into a, to a cross-stop dialogue here, okay, with, with 12 people. We ask that you address your questions to the county manager, the legislators, you know, and, and uh, the county attorney, county treasurer may have responses, but let's try to keep it clear so that everyone can understand and listen uh, to the question and uh, the answers. Um, we ask that you, uh, any questions you have will be addressed at the end. So take your full five minutes, take as much time um, as you want, and after you're done, we'll, we'll try to address some of your questions. Um, of course, we think some of this works that goes without saying, and uh, we thank you for your patience tonight and allowing us to get through some of our material. And uh, with that, I believe we have a list uh, here. So, first on the list, we have Lynn Stacy Monday. My blend is right there. Good evening. I'm with Stacy Weindecker. I'm a concerned landowner of the novel Carthage portion of the railroad, as well as a small business owner. Can you turn on, please? Good evening. Can you hear me now? Okay. I'm Lynn Stacey Lyon. I'm a concerned landowner of the Lobble Carthage portion of the railroad as well as a small business owner. This evening I have some about the purchase and usage of the railroad for the trails by Lewis County. Where is the money coming from that is projected and what is the projected cost to clear the trails, remove the switches, fix the bridges and the tracks, possibly pulling up the rails and paddles? What are the projected maintenance costs? You are asking us to swallow a lot of expense in a poor sheep pattern with high interest rates. You may ask us to currently fund a hospital addition, a new county highway garage, buying of a county building in Glenfield, renovation of Stowe Street offices, and the addition to the DMV election offices already this year. How much more as taxpayers can we afford? What is the ecological impact of removing the trails through the level of Castle swamps? Are you expected to run into more contaminated ground like you did building the county garage next to the railroad tracks? Who holds the insurance and who is going to police these rails as a snowmobile and ATV through 100 miles an hour comes out of that 14 miles of long straight trail and hits my tree? They're going to sue me because it was my tree. Do you think in these challenging times where diesel fuel is over six dollars a gallon and gas prices keep climbing and the lack of truck drivers, we should reinstate our trails, our rails, excuse me, to economically and green haul many cars of freight to our factories and carry passengers back and forth? Also, I ask, please make sure that the board holds other meetings when most of the landowners are farmers. And right now they're milking or they're chewing and they can't come. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. So we'll do our best to get a few of these because uh, they're probably questions that other folks have as well. Um, sure. Thank you. Additionally, 
we've got, as I mentioned, 17 state and federal grant sources that fund the Rails to Trails projects. We're very confident that we should be able to access some of those funds. Um, as I mentioned, the, each section of the project will have to have an environmental impact report, as we do now. Every time we add uh, miles of trail, we have to do environmental impact report. Uh, insurance, I believe the quote that we got to add this was $400. Honestly, I'm not getting any kind of pays extraordinary umbrella insurance. Um, we're very well covered with this stuff like this. That's not protecting us. Well, the county attorney that, you know, has already addressed that issue. And then regarding economic conditions, you know, I understand the burden of the taxpayer. I, I would just ask you to think, you know, what do you think the burden of the taxpayer is going to look like? Let's, let's try to envision this community 10 years, 15 years. We're getting older. We're not getting younger. We're not retaining young families. How are we going to pay for all the existing infrastructure we have if we don't change something from them? We have to make an investment in this community so that people want to be here. Okay? So if you think the taxes are bad now, I'm going to get some here. Okay. Next we have um, Carol Burns on the level. Good evening. As a citizen of Lewis County, I've been following this controversial topic, Rail to Trail proposal. I have some concerns I'd like to share. I question the intent that you're basing your decisions. We live in a beautiful area. Why I moved here when my children were young. This is a beautiful county. Visitors, locals have a multitude of recreational activities already in place. In case you've forgotten, we have the Adirondacks, we have the Thousand Islands, Lake Ontario, right in our own backyard. But we also have Whetstone Gulf with gorgeous hiking trails, campsites, swimming area. Maple Ridge, they have hiking, walking trails over there. They provide activities in the two park in the wintertime, brings people from outside the area in. The Tug Hill has hiking trails. Have you even been up in there? They've got beautiful hiking trails. The park above Barnes Corners has snowshoe races, which is a riot to go and watch. They have, they have cross-country skiing. And our own DEC in Dadville, 75 acres of walking trails, two gorgeous ponds with fishing piers, picnic area, porta potties around, totally mowed and maintained, handicapped ac accessible with flat ground. How many of you have spent time on the trails at, D at the DEC right in Dadville? I'd like to honestly have this proposed trail. Do you think it's going to trump everything else that we've got in our backyard already established? I feel this rail trail system may give us a black eye. As far as maintenance, can you picture the litter scattered up and down the trails? How, where are these people going to go to the bathroom? You can't put porta potties there. You can't service them. I have a friend, not from Lalo, but they own acreage on both sides that they purchased for her two sons and her husband to hunt. So they hunt deer in the fall. In the winter time, they run their dogs to hunt rabbits. God forbid there be an, a hunting accident. If that happens, whose shoulders is the liability and responsibility gonna fall? The landowner or you people? A couple years ago, a homeless person pitched a tent under the Route 12 overpass. Nobody could make them leave. How many homeless people are going to be doing the same thing on the rail trail? And how many uh, drug people will say, hey, here's a nice hiding place that we can do our thing? Recently, in Indiana, on a rail trail, a five-year-old arrest of a man who killed two 13-year-old girls out for a walk on the rail trail. 
You don't think that's on the minds of people? We know this is difficult to provide security on our ATV and snowmobile trails. This proposal may be putting our citizens at risk. How much better to spend the money in the communities that you people represent, build a meeting house, build a community center. Our young people have no place to go. Where are they gonna go after school? Where are they gonna go on weekends? How about providing and reinvesting the money into your own communities to provide recreational, supervised, safe activities right in your own? I think it's time that you rethought. I challenge you to lose your narrow vision. I challenge you to think of the citizens that you're representing, the taxpayers. There's more interesting destinations in our backyard that exist. Thank you. I'm from the Rebel Historic Society in Crowley, New York, if nobody knows about us. We need all the rail. That rail is one of the last short lines left and is historically eligible to be on the national and historical registers. You say you support us, which you do. You give us about 1000 to 2000 every year in donations in the year, we should with that. You've given us a letter of support, yes, too. But in the newspaper article, it says you are cutting us off at Beaver Falls. We get Crowland to Beaver Falls, that's it. Our rolling stop is in here, in the Lava Engine House, right over here. It's the 47. It's the original diesel to the line that operates. If you haven't seen the combine car that sits out here that's fully painted, that's our historic railway line. It's one thing to read about something in a book, but isn't it better to feel it, to write it, to experience it? That is better teaching. We need to teach the kids of our history instead of just, we need to teach them. It needs to be alive in their spirit. This is what we're all about. So I don't understand why we are getting cut off. That makes no sense to me. And there's also rail bikes here in Lava, out of the engine house. My boss will be up to speak to. Rail bikes bring a lot of business into the area too. With a railroad, you're in your spot. You don't go off on other people's land. You're, you're predictable, you know the times when we are going. It's set. And we have been working at clearing the tracks. We have been progressing. And if it wasn't for COVID, we'd be a lot more farther along. So, you say, each one of you, support us. Make that known. Keep the rail in place. From Crowland to Lauvo, and Lauvo to Carthage. And also, too, what about businesses coming in? Do you have rail? Oh, no, took them all up. Okay, see you, bye, believe. Once that infrastructure is gone, it is gone forever. Think about these things. Stand up. Do the right thing. Protect history. Because like I said, once it's gone, it's gone forever. And Ryan, could you tell me what a class three railroad is? Um, we've got documentation from uh, the New York City DOT back in 1991 that said that the railroad was designated as class three, which means that it's likely to be abandoned within three years. That's not what a class three railroad means. Uh, class three means short line railroad. That's what it means. So again, preserve. Those 400 signatures presented to the county. Listen to the people you represent. Our hearts are going out to each one of you. We are your tax paying voting base. 
protect the railroad, keep the rails in place, work with us. We've asked countless years, work with us, help us. We've asked, get those black top off from the crossings. We've asked each of those towns, year after year after year, we've been asking. We need that support. Rail is big business. Support us, please. And we know this is a hard decision for everybody involved and for our whole county. But stand up and protect history, please. Thank you. Designation impending for the railroad from uh, Lavo to Progan, and that the state of New York will have a say, and because it has been deemed uh, historically eligible for the, this, uh, for the register, and that they uh, will want to uh, have a say in whether you can pull up the tracks or not. Thank you. Thank you. The county is aware of the Federal uh, Historical Society's effort to get some of the property that they own on the National Historic Registry. We've talked with Brandon Carr, and he's working with us, so we're aware of that. here in 2010, and I was here in 2012, and now it's 2022. Of course, I'm opposed to the purchase of the GBT rail lines. You showed us your surveys and how the people have spoken with the JCC surveys. Well, we gave you 400 signatures, which we got in six days of property owners who are opposed to this purchase. We also have distributed over 200 signs in people's yards, and yet you think this is in the best interest of the county? When are you going to start listening to the taxpayers of the county instead of setting your own agenda of what you think people should have? Does that mean anything to any of you? My legislator, Ian Gilbert, told me the county would give us an easement to allow us to cross the railroad tracks onto our property. We have been crossing. We have been crossing to the other side of the property for over 70 years. That's just my husband, not his family. This kind of statement is why landowners are skeptical of anything that the county proposes near their property. They also state that this is not going to cost taxpayers any money for this purchase or rehab. Do you all know, understand, that COVID money and grant money is taxpayer money? Why are we not cutting property taxes and taking the tax off gas? I have some questions, but first I want to read a statement that I read to the legislators on, I think it was a June 7th meeting. Utilizing resources to enhance the quality of life. It is further declared of the legislature to encourage the use of agricultural land for recreational uses, which are consistent with the primary use of such land while at the same time promoting additional tourism and employment opportunities and income for landowners in rural area 
and enhancing quality of life of persons not otherwise able to obtain access to agricultural land for recreation. Really? Why is it that you think that the, uh, agricultural landowners need to share their property for recreation or with persons that don't own land? Would it be okay if we came in your backyards and walked, rode bikes, drove snowmobiles or four wheelers? I guess that's my first question. I think probably not, and I don't think a one of you well, Larry lives near a trail, he tells me, but I'm not sure how close it is to his house. So I have some questions. It's been asked already tonight, what's the estimate cost of the proposed rails to trails per mile? It hasn't been answered. How do you plan to sustain it? How much money do you think this trail will generate for county taxpayers? Zero. Have you done a study? Does, how do you plan to protect landowners from trespassing, litter, property damage, and human waste? You now have opened up a homeless warming center. Where do you think these homeless people are going to go after that closes? The village park has syringes all over where our kids play. There are homeless camping out under a bridge. This is a perfect place for them to be, and you're making it possible. What law enforcement is going to police the trail? You had to hire security because the, you, it's so taxed up on the hill with the sheriff's department, he doesn't have enough manpower. How are you going to police these trails for us? Are you going to assure that we won't get sued if someone crosses onto our property? We have to go to the trouble of posting our property, warn city, warning people when they get on there, oh, you don't belong here, which they already know. So that's our responsibility. That's what you're putting on taxpayers' shoulders. And when you hold a meeting at 6 o'clock in the evening, half the farmers that are impacted by this are in their barn milking cows. You maybe ought to think about them for a chance. So. If you answer any of my questions, you're spending $2.5 million and you have no idea how much this will cost. It is your fiduciary responsibility to know all these questions to my, all these answers to my questions before you spend taxpayer dollars. You have to stop thinking that you know what's best for us. Through the development of our outdoor assets in this county. 
We have had very robust sales tax receipts in Lewis County, and that is largely driven by the tourism that we have. Uh, another police issue, you know, the, the county board of legislators, the county manager, is not, you know, with the power of tasks with public safety. That's on the chair. If there's concerns about the way the bill is being, you know, being controlled, that's, you know, you need to take that Okay. Next we have Mike Taylor. Some of the reasons why she said and some of the reasons why everyone else is going to say. Um, but this, just watching what you put up for your PowerPoint, growth, health, 30 miles of trail is not going to do anything for growth and health. If you turn it into an ATV snowmobile trail, any section of it, we already have that tourism here. You're not going to add any more tourism. They're already here. On that, second homes. That's where this is driving up our property taxes, the second homes for all the trails that we have here. I mountain bike, I hike, I ski. There are hundreds of trails all around the county. I go explore different ones. We don't need another section of trail to, to drive the cost up of everything else. What we do need, when you talk about growth, health, we need a community center. A community center is going to bring people in. Tourism, with our plan for the community center, softball, baseball tournaments, soccer tournaments, all these types of tournaments, that's gonna bring new tourism in. You're not gonna have elderly, you're not gonna have disabled, you're not gonna have young children walking these trails to get their fitness in. A trail system will be set up with the community center to use those trails. There's people going to be around there. There's people that can train. A community center is going to be more beneficial. I think you guys need to get behind the community center and put your money towards that versus spending $2.5 million on 30 miles of trail that is not going to get that much use, and you're intending to use it for bicycling, walking. And we all know it's going to turn into something else. No one's going to want to use that. Let's Put our focus on community first. Not worry about the tourism that comes in. That tourism will come in through other things other than the snowmobiling and ATV that's already here. So hopefully we can just put our money behind something that's going to be beneficial, not cost us a lot of money down the road where the community center would help. Thank you. several items to consider, energy and fuel prices will probably continue to rise. The most efficient way to move freight is by railroad. Railroads are anywhere from 10 to 200 times more efficient than trucks. Why are we in Lewis County not using the most fuel efficient method of moving freight? The pollution problem. Just this last spring, the New York State Legislator legislature considered banning the installation of wood-burning stoves in new home construction to help control pollution. How soon will the recreational use of internal combustion engines also be restricted or banned? Possibly will trucks be restricted in favor of more efficient methods? Trains are nine times less energy, trains use nine times less energy per ton of kilometer then trucks, and are at least four times more fuel efficient. 
Trains emit 60, 60 to 70 percent less greenhouse gases than trucks do. Should, should we remove the rails now? What if the state or federal government restricts the movement of freight by highway in the future for pollution restrictions? The cost of reinstalling tracks would be more than this county is worth. What happens to our county then? My most immediate concern about replacing the rails and ATV trails is the close proximity of the Beaver River School to a possible ATV trail. What all forms of extracurricular activity will those students be exposed to along that unmonitored stretch of woods? The money that this county may receive is to be used for improvements to the infrastructure, infrastructure, not its removal. Especially when its removal will lead to more fuel consumption and pollution production. Several ideas of possible projects may include, one, opening up the railroad right away for trolley and rail car use. This would be terrific for fall foliage stores, especially the stretches from Lions Falls to Boonville and between Lowell and Crowley. Two, purchase land along the tracks to Lions Falls to install a parking lot for commuters, commuters headed to Boonville or Utica to park their cars and board a train. Three, work with Jefferson County to repair the bridge over the Black River at Carthage so that full weight freight cars can access Castle Lane and Lava. Four, repair the washout fill between New Bremen and Beaver Falls. Recreation is important to this county. Providing trolley and rail bike rides would bring in a slightly different recreationists than those who prefer ATVs, but the two types should complement each other and keep our hotels and restaurants busy. Trolley and rail bike routes could be provided with Porta Johns at key locations so that the riders don't have to go along the right of way or on private property. Perhaps fishermen could charter trolley rides to some of the railroad bridges to try their luck there. Again, Port of Johns could be appropriately placed for their use. Just this past summer and fall, the railroad between Utica and Tupper Lake was reopened to trains. Will whoever spent the $17 million to make that possible be interested in occasionally running that train from Utica to Lions Falls? The Boondocks restaurant would be a great destination for that train. Possible freight loads may include road salt. We have at least three highway departments that are adjacent to the tracks. Why are we beating our roads to death hauling them salt when we can bring it by rail? Wood bound for Fort Drum could be weighed and transferred to rail at Beaver Falls, Lalvo, and Casterland. Paul would head south and east. From Lewis County could be weighed and transferred to rail at Lyons Falls. How much safer would our highways be if both gasoline and diesel fuel was brought in by rail instead of highway? Would 3B lumber or Roomba be in business if it couldn't send its poles out by rail? Another concern is the death rate of ATV trail users in this county. I've heard that 10 so far this calendar year. Is that acceptable? Do we check off these deaths as some sort of suicide? What is this county's responsibility in these deaths? Should we be concerned? Should we care? clarify a couple of things that I've heard so far quickly. The uh, concept of class three track is merely the degree of suitability for traffic at a certain speed. In class three, tra three tra traffic can go 50 miles an hour. Uh, we are operators. Uh, I have made a large investment with the thought of operating these rail bikes 
within Jefferson and Lewis County predominantly. I have enough to develop uh, operations elsewhere, but I would much rather see them home based. The rail bikes uh, on a national basis are proving their worth from a tourism point of view and from an economic point of view for the operators. It's no secret the Adirondack Scenic has started the rail bikes in their ter territory with much success. It brings a lot of people that wouldn't normally come to your area, and it's partially because of advertising and the, you know, the social media type of uh, situations. So it's, it's good recreational business for all the communities. And my intent from the very beginning was to form a nucleus of operation from, at Carthage and Lowellville. Uh, Railstar is a property owner in the uh, village of Lowellville. It's a property owner in the village of Carthage. And we would like to enhance both these properties as terminal points. Uh, the rails to trail concept of just tearing up all the rails just seems to throw, from my perspective, some confusion at me quite extensively. We've all been uh, concerned and held back in the last two years from making further investments. But needless to say, starting before two years ago and during this period, uh, we have invested almost three quarters of a million dollars in rail bikes, uh, small locomotives, other small equipment that can operate well on these seldom used tracks and perform a tourism draw, so to speak. Uh, and it's something that we would dearly like to continue on. However, if the rails are torn up immediately, I guess that puts an end to that program. And uh, from an economic point of view, we'll have to seek a further involvement elsewhere. The uh, cost studies that you've done, I've noticed you, you, you did put a cost to recover the rail, the steel. Uh, if you get today's current price, including labor to recover it, it might not yield quite that much. But you've also said nothing about the ties. The state DEC, the minute you tear up a railroad, you have to remove all the ties and ship them out of state, perhaps to Ohio, where they're disposed of properly. Uh, there's no very few places in the Northeast where you can dispose of them. That is very expensive and would chew up a good deal of that profit. Uh, but the rail itself, actually being class three, is excellent rail suited for lighter duty. But you can run locomotives at 25 to 40 miles an hour on that track. Uh, but lighter, both uh, self-contained locomotives, so to speak, that have passenger compartments and the rail bikes, they weigh 600 pounds a piece. So you put four people on and you, you still, depending on the weight of course, uh, you're, you're cons considered a very, very light load. These rails that, as they exist are rather isolated. Uh, they wouldn't seem to appeal to, to much to a, a walking crew, uh, nor the bicycles. And to make them suitable for bicycles, it seems like it would take quite a bit of time and other efforts of uh, earthworks. So I, I, I would just hope that there's gonna be some suitable review period where we perhaps could still incorporate our future plans into enhancing both Lowellville and Jefferson County's recreational tourism. So that's about all I have to say tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Ron.
but it very well could be a wash. But there's some sections that only have real seal and they're fairly easy to do. And the strap value of seal um, you know, should have some value to the county. So. Uh, next we have market. tonight seeking an opposition to our county spending 2.5 million taxpayer dollars on land that is assessed for about 20% of that amount. <coughs> we live in a rural, rural area that is certainly not lagging in nature or recreational trails. Our county was allotted this money through the American Rescue Plan in order to help people recover from the severe negative impact that we all suffered. I'm not sure how spending nearly all that money to acquire a 30 mile section of trail that travels through mostly farmland and swamps helps any of us at all. This is simply wasteful spending of tax dollars when they could be used to actually help people during this time of need. Most county governments are using these funds on areas of actual need and projects that will increase in spending and have no actual, well, I'm sorry. But according to the ARPA funding guidelines, projects must fit into one of the following categories. Responding to public health and negative impacts of the pandemic, providing premium pay to essential workers, provide government services to the extent of revenue lost due to the pandemic, and making necessary investments in water, sewer, and broadband infrastructure. How does this fit into any of those categories? Mr. Gilbert answered a question on social media with the following answer, and I quote, I don't expect there would be any direct revenue, <coughs> revenue from trails, but that isn't the point of them. So if it's not apparently, so it's apparently not at all lost revenue due to the pandemic, although the final rule states that the SLFRF funding must fit into one of those general categories and it needs to respond directly to the impact of the pandemic. I live less than four miles outside the village of Lalo, and I only have access to one broadband internet that comes from an Akwesasne reservation that's three hours away. Do you think people will move to an area that has, doesn't, can't provide good high speed internet services to locations that are four miles? from the county seat? What businesses do you anticipate seeing any increased amount of economic activity which would provide some tax revenue as a result of this proposed trail? How is a trail that's gonna take 10 to 15 years to complete help any of us recover from our current economic hardships that we suffered? What is the projected long-term cost of getting this proposed trail repurposed from a railroad into a recreational trail? The bridges over the Black River and the Black River Flats are in horrible condition. Replacing or repairing them would probably cost millions alone, even for four-wheelers to go across. Pretty much everyone is struggling with inflation in our economy right now, and we have to prioritize our wants and needs. I think this trail is clearly a want, and what we need to do is use it somewhere where we, where we have actual need. Thank you for your time, and I, along with many others, look forward to getting some of these questions answered. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Uh, I'll do my best to. Sure. Eric's going to handle the uh, American Supply question. I'm going to be a little generic on the art of funds. Um, but I can tell you, and so bad on I've been working with state and federal funding for many, many years. This is about the most open-ended funding I've seen in all those years. There is no requirement, in essence, on what we spend those funds for. Um, so I appreciate the information you researched. Um, but I, I can tell you from all the information that we have in every other county, municipality, and their state, there is no strict requirements on how funds are used. Uh, Lewis County with the county managers and um, legislative leadership developed a plan before just about any other community I'm aware of in middle of 2021 on how we would be sending those, those funds. 
when they stopped those plans. Uh, it was about a six point um, effort, including um, downtown revitalization, child care, workforce development, recreational assets, and broadband. Um, so, just a little clarification on that information. Uh, thanks, Eric. Uh, broadband specifically between uh, fund balance dollars, the kind of sort of million dollars of, of local taxpayer dollars into broadband. We've leveraged two million dollars of American Rescue Plan funds for broadband, and we've landed another million and a half dollars of grants. So we are doing more objectively than any community in our area to support broadband growth. And that, that's, that's measurably true. It's on the way. There's going to be a ribbon cutting next week, in fact, for two broadband projects that just launched, one in Lionsdale, one in the town of Diana. Uh, we've got to uh, agree with Charter Spectrum for, uh, to cover another 300 homes. That is waiting on national grid pole permits. Um, and then we have an additional project that's going to cover the Denmark, Copenhagen area, and we're working with uh, uh, some partners to get access to the um, towers in that area. The, WPS and WTI towers in order to project broadband from that. So the county has been more aggressive on broadband really than, than anyone else in the area. Uh, regarding bridges, Mark, you asked a question about the bridges. Uh, yeah, the bridges for locomotives are in bad shape, but for pedestrian traffic, that's. Have you walked across those bridges? No. Oh. <laughs> to oppose what you people want to do. I think it's a poor use of money. You know, if you got too much money, why don't you give it back to the taxpayers? It's not your money, it's taxpayers' money. <laughs> there was a lot of people upset out there when you give over $400,000 to the county employees just to show up to work. That ain't right. Give it back to the taxpayers. I. When I was a legislator almost 20 years ago, we talked about civil uh, corporate parks 20 years ago. Every time we talked about it, we couldn't spend the money because we needed all county employees had to have a raise. And as some of most the chairman was there at the same time I was, and they had meetings to get rid of legislators that wanted to help develop Lewis County so people, our kids didn't have to leave. Our greatest export for 20, 30 years or longer has been our children because they don't have good paying jobs in Lewis County. You want to put this railroad in? What kind of jobs is it going to create? Servant jobs? Would you take those jobs? All of them would be seasonal. That's what that's what will happen. These people come. We have a bed and breakfast. We have people come. You heard the, the, the man here. It's the sheriff's problem. With, when they don't behave. What well, isn't his problem? It's all his problem. You know, this last year we carried seven people out of this county in bags in the wintertime, in plastic bags. They got killed. People don't behave. We had people stay at our bed and breakfast, came off the hill, and they said, we're leaving. We're, we're out of here. They're nuts up there, the way they're driving. And there's nobody up there that stops anybody. They just go. And they know nothing's going to happen to anybody. Almost nobody gets a ticket. Nowadays, you got this no bail deal going on. No matter what you do, they just let you go as soon as they arraign you. Uh, I just don't see the payback for this type of thing for Lewis County. We need to put water and sewer in the ground. You go down to the city of Watertown, every street you go out, I don't care which street you go out in the city of Watertown, there's fire hydrants and sewer in the ground already. 
and there's businesses on every single street going out of Watertown because the water and sewers are already in the ground. The only place we got water and sewer in Lewis County now is when you go to number four road. That's why those stores are out there and those businesses are out there. That's the only reason they're out there. When I was a legislator, that's when uh, Walmart wanted to come, Kmart wanted to come to Lewis County. We don't need them. We got enough. We already got it. We got the PNC. We got Ames. We don't need those kind of things. Next thing you know, PNC went bankrupt. Ames went bankrupt, and everybody got in a panic. Larry was there. He knows. Heck, you had to travel out of Lewis County by underwear. That was that was what everybody was a big laugh about it. And why why did uh, it finally change? Because the city of uh, Lowville, the village of Lowville, and the town of Lowville finally gave them water and sewer. That's the only reason that Walmart's out there, because they finally got water and sewer. Simple as that. You've got to have water and sewer in the ground. Every, you've got to control who, he who controls water and, can, and sewer controls growth. That's a fact of life. I don't care where you travel, that's the way it is. If you want Lewis County to move into the future, you'll put water and sewer in the ground. We just spent, you guys just authorized $50 million for all these buildings for the county. Fine. If you thought it was important, well, how come you can't find the money for water and sewer at the same time? 20 years ago we talked about it and still talking about it, still dreaming about it. If you want to change Lewis County, you got to put water and sewer in the ground. Simple as that. Thank you. First, I want to ask you, Ryan and everyone else. So, basically, everyone that spoke here so far tonight has covered anything that I would have talked about. So, I want to ask you if I could do this a little different and just ask you, Ryan, directly questions to you, maybe three, four questions. Is that okay? All right. So, first of all, I want to thank all of you for allowing the public to come here and voice their opinions. All right. For all of you that work with me, you know that. I've worked with you, some of you, we had disagreements. I res completely respect the positions that you're sitting up there, because I sat there with this at one time, most of this. For those of you that don't know, I'm Brian Moser, former District 4 legislator, that Ian, I let go of and Ian took my place. So, here in my hand, okay, this here is the original purchase agreement the GVT, which was actually Mohawk Adirondack Transportation, when they took the rails over from Conrad. Okay? Talk to the Surface Transportation Board today. First of all, the rails have to be abandoned. Okay? None of, nothing can be done until the State Surface Transportation Board of the United States Federal Government gets an application from GVT and ask for an abandonment, okay? It's a $4,000 cost to get this. So Eric, we, we talked about this, we went through this talk with GBT when I was there with you. The push then was that we wanted to keep the rails because if there's ever a possibility of the rails coming back, if we had control of the rails, it made it easier to do that. There was never any talk about tearing up the rails, making it in the trail. Well, I take that back, there was a little bit to make it a joint thing, and then that way the county had the control of it in case there was ever an opportunity to bring the rail system back. That's the talks we had. The talks with GVT fell through, and I don't know the full scope of what the reason was, but there was a lot involved with doing the abandonment, okay? So with that being said, the abandonment is a true trail, the trail, or the rails have to be unused for commercial use for two years, and then they can file for the abandonment club or the abandonment. <clears throat> okay? That has not been done yet because this is the last paperwork that the federal government has received from GBT is when it was purchased. Right here. I have the copies in my hand. Class three rail, yes, the gentleman, gentleman Lori also, up to 30 miles an hour for trails. There's sections that are class one also. 
So my questions to all of you is, all right, you say that the steel, there's going to be a net benefit to that. You have no clue how much it's going to cost you to take out the railroad ties. DEC says they have to be taken out. They can be ground up on site and delivered to a certified incinerator, which would be re-energy. Guess what's happened in re-energy, seeing how our great state of New York <coughs> elected Kathy, Col or Kathy Hochul. Guess what's going to happen to re-energy? Because this great state doesn't recognize biomass as a renewable energy. So we can take the nine counties throughout New York State, the big cities, for that. I'm going to throw a little politics in <laughs> So with that being said, I talked to an individual that did the grinding of the tiles, or the, the railroad ties, up to on Tupper Lake last summer. I'm involved with that type of business. So, the cost that I was told for that is $325 an hour to grind up these creosalt treated ties, okay? Re-Energy will pay a certain amount per tonnage for them. But you're going to have to do it within the next seven months because guess what? Re-Energy is not going to take that. So you are left with the cost now to take them tiles. There's only two certified places that you can take them to that can grind them up and sell the chips. Otherwise, you've got to take them to landfill. I do believe Robinson approved one, I was told, Waterloo out to Seneca Falls, and I think there's one other one in Clinton County. They will only take a certain amount of them at one time. So it's going to be a long process. So, um, got off track now. I, I just, it seems to me that, are you sure? I, I don't want to cut anyone out short, so. Um, it, it just seems to me that we are jumping ahead of the car, or I mean, ahead of the horse with the car here. You have no idea what the total cost of this is going to be. You're saying you don't know exact uses of this. Well, that would be like me going out and buying a truck, and, or buying 10 tractor trailers and saying, well, I really have no idea how, what I'm going to haul with it. You're, you're doing the same thing. This legislator, even from before me, Gary and him, every department has been set up with their financing in the budgeting to operate like a business. So we charge different departments for different services they provide to each other. So if we're gonna operate our county like a business, then let's do it. It, it just seems to me that you're, you're, you've got this glutton of money for the COVID relief funding. It's just burning a hole in your pockets. And I would agree with some of these other individuals. If, if Eric, if there's no determined factor that determines how you get this funding, I, I, why is it we aren't spending extra money instead of bonding for your new buildings, which all these buildings, we could have built a new building four years ago for about a third of the cost of what you are with all the projects that are going on now, but we all know how that went. Um, you got infrastructure. Give more to the towns. You gave, well, five, what was it, $500,000? I didn't have a pencil. So if I'm off on the numbers, forgive me to correct me. You had $500,000 you distributed to the towns. You gave, what was the total cost of all the raises that you gave the employees? What was the total cost? The, 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 the retention money. Oh. Uh, okay, so 400, so there's a million dollars, okay? So the employees get a half a million dollars, the towns and villages get a half a million dollars approximately, and then the rest of the tax holder, the taxpayers benefit nothing from it. There's ways that you guys could have refunded. I, I understand the fact that we don't want to cut taxes because at some time the revenues are going to drop and it's going to need to be I, I get that. And, and, and for, we've always talked about that as a legislative group, and I'm sure Gary and did also. But there's a way to rebate that money that you keep the tax rate the same and cut everyone a rebate check because the state does it to us every year. 
So, I mean, I just, I just think that this, there could have been a little more outward thinking of this. I mean, and, and I understand the seat you guys sit in. You guys are getting a hell of a lot more information than what we get in the public that you're making your decisions on. I, I just, if it was me sitting in Ian's spot, I mean, everyone knows where I would have stood anyway. So, I mean, so I guess, I guess that's it. So, I appreciate your time. I mean, you know, thank you. Thank you. So uh, one point that Brian made um, that is worth you know, repeating, uh, the deal that we have set up with the GPC is contingent upon approval from the Service Transportation Board. So that is that there is. Okay. Uh, Stephen Morris is next. Good evening. Uh, I'd like to take an opposition to this. Uh, first, I have a question for each and every one that's sitting on the stage. How many of you people have actually been on the rail beds and know anything about them other than an aerial photo? All the way to Carpenter? No, not in one trip, but in several trips. I've got okay. relatives that own land on both sides of the trail. Okay, well, I own land on both sides of the trails. I have for 50 plus years. Uh, the area that I'm most familiar with is Simbabwe to Fashion. And most of the trail bed down through there uh, is approximately 10 to 12 foot wide on top. And a lot of it has a 20 foot drop off the side. And I wonder what you're thinking about a liability issue there. I don't care if it's people walking, riding a bicycle, four wheelers or snowmobiles or what. Guys on the hill are getting killed at a level. They run off from that, you know. Uh, and the question was brought up to the uh, county attorney about the liability issue. And I don't think it was really answered. Uh, the landowner has the liability. If we do everything we're supposed to do, we're still going to have to pay and fight it. Yeah. Oh, I'm afraid so. Well, you may not think so, but I've been a landlord for a long time. You have to trespass when you own the property. If you have a hazardous condition, you have to what do you what do you determine as a hazardous condition? Let me explain, okay? If you have a hazardous condition, a known hazardous condition, and you have known trespassers, repeated trespassers, then you will have to Post your property to warn them of that hazardous condition. That doesn't mean that you would then be liable for anything that happens to that trespass, if, if that person trespasses. What do you deem as a hazardous condition? Do you deem a hole in the ground that some idiot is going to walk out there and fall in and break a leg or break his neck or break a back? Yeah. So, again, if you have a known hazardous condition on your property, if somebody, your visitors come to your property and you have a known hazardous condition, your friends come over and you let them all be in the backyard and you did you know, dig a big hole and cover it over it with something. You're liable to that. I'm not, I'm not talking about a hole you dig. I don't know if you're familiar well, with a woodland or anything. You gave me an example of there being right. a hole on your property. There can be holes in the woods, whatever. Well, you know, yeah, so that's, not not, not that's, just, that's just the property, the way it is. That's exactly. not your exactly. known condition that you cause. That's our liability if you got somebody trespassing. I beg to differ. I don't think for a trespasser that that would be the case. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Did you have another question? No, I'll just go over the answer. Steve, you have a minute. Can I just make one comment, Joe? Okay. 
So I understand what you're saying in legal terms, but I'm going to give you an instance at my workplace. All right. We, we travel on roads, logging roads, that are ATV, snowmobile use also, all right? An instance was a snowmobiler that was traveling at a high speed hit one of our log trucks head on and was killed. Log truck was found driving, was found not to be liable. Guess how many people they sued? So, I mean, and I understand in your law books it says that if you do such and such, you aren't liable. But if you get the right attorney, they can sue anyone for anything that they want. So listen, the truck driver got sued who wasn't in the wrong. The snowmobile they agreed said it was at high speed. The landowner got sued. The land management company called Mopus got sued. And International Paper got sued because the pulp was going in their mouth. So I, I think that you're steering people in the wrong way when you're saying that if you do everything right, you're not liable. You, you as an attorney should know that that's not going to Being liable and potentially being sued because in your own example, the, the truck company was found not to be liable. But they're so still so 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 sued. speakers, I'm in favor of the project. I sit on a number of boards, as, as many people know. One of the biggest problems we have is recruiting people to come to Lewis County. And in order to get people here in the new day and age, it's not always about the money, it's about the quality of life. When we talk about professionals that we need in places like the hospital, school, and other places. The managers, who are the ones who come and fill the jobs that we want our children and others to have, are looking for certain things. And a trail system is not a bad idea. I also sit on the school, on the BOSIS board. We've been very fortunate for years we fought to add programs to our programs here in Lewis County, because we're so much smaller than Jefferson County. And this year, we finally got a heavy equipment program. And it's housed at the JCC program, at the building. And it happens to sit next to the trail. This project would provide an excellent opportunity for our students to hone their skills for the future. It is an opportunity that should not be passed up by this community. If we don't invest in ourselves, we can't expect others to come here and invest in us. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Next we have Alan Scallon. I'll be brief. Um, my name is Alice Dowling from Port Lighting. I know quite a few of the people on the board. 
And Ryan mentioned at the beginning that our children are leaving the county. You know what? He, he is probably right. But when I look at the people here and some of the people on the board, including myself, we got third, fourth, and fifth generation people in this audience. And they raise children anywhere from one child to probably 15 to 18 children in their family. And they provided for those people. And the way they provided for those people is that we had an industrial break of uh, business and a base in this town. And that industrial base now is deteriorating dramatically. We had agricultural dying, and it's too bad. We had the forest industry, which I'm part of and have been for 44 years. Our forest industry is going out the door. We've lost Lion Falls. We lost Beaver Falls. We've lost up here at uh, Champion and other industries, Lionsdale. Well, luckily, we got Burroughs Paper, which is now Twin Rivers, still running. But we also are losing other industrial bases that we really desperately need. And the money of $2.5 million, and it's coming from excess sales tax. I happen to be a mayor in the village of Port Lyon for 14 years. And we always tried to run our budget as close as we could because we knew what the people's tax bases were. And if you've got excess sales tax, and now also with this extra COVID funding that was given to us as a great gift from the people in Washington, why don't we use this money to, to, to drive home and get the industrial base back into this county, which will, number one, protect our kids from going someplace east of Jesus or whatever you want to call it, for a job, we can do it here. And that's my biggest point. Let's use the funding that, if it's excess sales tax, either figure out how not to have so much, or maybe give it back to the, you know, the people who worked here hard for their livelihood for years, and are on a fixed income on Social Security, just barely making it, but they're the first people come the first day in January after they get their taxes, bring their pennies, nickels, and dimes to pay their taxes and go out probably without some heat or food. My point is, let's take care of us here, and the recreational industry is coming in. It'll come in anyways, but let's support the people here. Thanks a lot, and have a good night. Thanks, Alan. Uh, next, we have Jessica Clemens. Good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here uh, with everyone to discuss the topic tonight. I think this is a really smart investment for the people who live in this community. Tourism is great, bringing other people is terrific, but I think this is really important for the people who live and work and play in Lewis County. I don't live too far from uh, rail in Bremen, and in the area that I live in, I run, I bike, I ski, I see people walking on River Road 812, pushing carriages, and it's really dangerous. Even running on 812, I can't tell you how many times I've been coal dusted. It's just about every week when I'm out and about. Um, and I think something like this would be really important for families with small kids, uh, for people that have mobility issues, and it could be a safe space. So I know that you're not talking about who's using the trails and when, but I hope that you'll also emphasize uh, pedestrians and people who are using non-motorized uh, transportation choices. I think that's really important. And I'm one of the people who moved to Lewis County with my family a few years ago. And I think this is a really great community 
that we can all work towards and had some mixed uses and some really great opportunities to connect communities and to have some exciting things to attract neighbors, friends and family, and people that might want to consider bringing their families to Lewis County and also retaining uh, their families so our kids can stay here and live with us. So um, thanks for hearing me and that's all I have for today. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. Next, we have Marty McDowell. Thank you. My questions have been answered. Thank you, Marty. Next, we have Brian Reed. Hello, my name is Brian Reed. Uh, the reason I'm kind of polished to this is because this trail goes through the middle of my barnyard, basically, and it will severely impact the way I can do business. There is uh, 10 or 12 farms that are active on this rail line, and uh, your kind of recreation and activities is not going to coexist with what a working farm has to do. Um, nobody has addressed that. Uh, I told you before, these, just the line from Wildville to Deer River, we put $11.7 million in the economy last year with the multiplier effect of your fuzzy math you use with the recreation of uh, $20.2 million. If it would severely impact even one of them, you're going to lose more revenue there than you are ever going to gain with this. Um, I, I looked into buying the railroad, and when you were throwing out that $500,000 number there, us as landowners, we could buy that. But it was going to cost us $1.8 million to remove the ties, and by the time you get a contractor to come remove the rails, you were going to lose a million dollars, even with the scrap prices, what they are now. So your envelope math might not work out right now. <laughs> and we hear about the quality of life for everyone. There's, I don't know, how many people live next to the railroad that their quality of life will be impacted, but that's okay. It seems to be fine in your eyes. Is there going to be money set aside for these farmers that lose money on this project? Because if I can't graze cows, that's about $100,000 a year for me. So when you got some little old lady with her puppy out there that doesn't want to put it on a leash, and it runs across my pasture, it makes my cows run, with ag and market laws, I can shoot that dog. I don't want to shoot that dog, but I can. And I will. There's no address... You, you, you live on this dream that everything is sunshine and rainbows. That's not the way it is out there in the real world. There's people on my land all the while. There is a chunk of county land in the middle of my farm, which I had kids two weeks ago set up their deer blinds on the county land. Well, you're not on the county land. Well, I thought I could hunt here. You can hunt in these little pine trees. Your blinds are on my land. Well, where are you going to shoot the deer? out there in those fields. Do you read the post-it sign? Well, I didn't think you'd care. And that's the kind of people that we run into out there. What are you going to do to address that? The sheriff's not going to patrol the trails you have now. The DEC, are they going to patrol the trails? State troopers? What, what, what are you going to do for law enforcement? I'd like an answer to that. Last time, last time, last time. Okay. You, you can answer that question. Sure. 
So, as I mentioned before, law enforcement is responsible to be the sheriff of the county. I think there's 10 legislators here that I'd love to see more like law enforcement in Lewis County. I am a little I, I don't, I don't mean your, 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 your trolls got up there now and just waited for I mean, real life. Yeah, I'm confused as to why the world legislators continue to get pinned down from the public on um, public safety questions when the sheriff is independent of that. He has resources. He should be asking him those questions. Excuse me, I did ask the sheriff that, and he said he hasn't had a new deputy since 2012. You guys are not funding him, is what I was told. So I did talk to him and ask him how he was going to patrol uh, this property, this rail trail. And he said that he does not have enough deputies. He has two deputies and one sergeant on it running. All that he has in them. Um. Thank you. just like to say that my husband and I had a chance to go to Strasburg, Pennsylvania. And while we were there, they have a beautiful um, museum set up for the railway there. And they have rail rides and they have different cars that you can see. It's much like a, a smaller scale. Um, what we have in Krogan, um, theirs is huge. Uh, we could do something like that, and I think people would donate to that. Um, and I think that that would be a great draw. Um, if you're looking to get people here, um, they're, they're packed down there every weekend um, with tourists coming in. Um, I think the rail trail is a bad idea. I live near, uh, our land is, the rail goes right through it. Um, we don't mind the trains, they're kind of on time. Um, but I do mind people walking through my property. And I consider it our property because when the railroad took over and took the property through eminent domain, we were told that if they ever went defunct, the property would be given back to the landowners. Right now, we harvest trees alongside the railroad tracks. If a tree falls on the tracks, we have a number we can call um, to tell them not to send a train because we have to clear the track. Uh, what's gonna happen if a tree falls? Who are we gonna call? Who are we gonna call? And we also use it for hay. We get hay along the tracks. Um, how are we gonna do that if it's a rail trail. It doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, we're going to be devoid of using the land that right now we can use. And it, it's, it's going to be covered in garbage, just the way the snowmobile trails are. Um, this is not for people's health. How is it healthy to ride a snowmobile or an ATV from bar to bar to avoid the police? And they know they can avoid the police because like you say, um, there is no patrols on these trails. They can't do it. We already have trails. If people want to use trails, we already have them. And we already have walking trails. Has anybody been up on 177? There's beautiful trails up there. Has anybody been to Lyons Falls? If you people have money for trails, why can't we use it to improve those trails? When I walk a trail, I have to pick up sticks, I have to move logs, I have to do that. Why don't we use the money to improve the trails that we already have? Lions Falls has a beautiful trail system. Nobody walks it. There's Agers Falls. People can walk that. Nobody's on that when I'm on it. I very seldom see people using those trails. We do not need another hiking trail. They're all over the Adirondacks, they're all over our area, and if we have money to spend on trails, then improve the ones that we already have. And it's going to increase everyone's taxes to do this. Anyone that lives along the railroad, you said it yourself. 
that it's going to increase the property value. What happens when our property value goes up? If I paint the porch, our taxes go up. If there's a rail trail in front of my house, my taxes are going to go up. We have raised 10 children, nine of whom are still in the area raising their families. So don't tell me people are willing to leave. The only reason they want to leave is because of stuff like this. And they're sick and tired of it. for the community. And um, I also uh, know that you are hearing what people are saying and are going to try to find uh, a way to do good things for the community that is going to be uh, 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 considering all of the factors. And I trust that. Um, I just want to point one of the factors as a pediatrician is I think it's important to have opportunities for safe recreation for our kids besides just on a ball field. And I do think it is true there's awesome hiking that is nice for family weekend things, but I think it would be terrific if there was recreation that kids could act, access safely during the week and not have to have it be just a family outing, but let them be able to ride a bike safely in town, for instance. Uh, so I uh, am hopeful that there can be some sort of compromise worked out where I know you guys are going to weigh what people are saying and you know, take advantage of resources that are available to our community to make it better and make it easier for um, safe, safe recreation for all. So, thank you. Thank you, Shereen. Next, we have David Monday. Well, everybody said pretty well what I'm thinking. Um, I talked to one of the legislators and um, I said to him, isn't there a better way to spend money? And I give him some suggestions. And I guess you give the town of Crow and Fire Department a big whopping $1,000. Pretty nice of you. But you want to spend millions on the rail system. Makes a lot of sense. And I believe you all voted in favor of it. Why? It don't make no sense to me. If you get up at 3 o'clock in the morning and you work at 8 o'clock at night like I do, you think you're going to walk down a tra trail? You're going to go to bed at 8 o'clock. I don't get it. Why ain't you got your thinking cap on? I, I ain't saying no more. Just, to this. It must be hard when you work so hard to listen to people be so unkind. I ride bicycle in Boonville on their trails. I've ridden in Rome on their trails. 
I've written in Syracuse on their trails. I've written in uh, the Long the Black River Trail. There isn't any more debris than you would see walking down the street. I think it's important that we have places to ride safely. Riding on 812, a car came so close to me, I could have touched it if I reached out my hand. In this day and age, with so many distracted drivers, it's hard to find a safe place to ride. I've had two very good friends hit by bicycles. One, her bicycle was crumbled. I want a safe place for my grandchildren to ride. By the time we get it finished, I'll probably be too old to ride. But thank you very much for all your efforts to improve on the model. I appreciate it. My name is Bruce Rohr. I live in the big city of Deer River. Um, landowner along the line. Just one question, and, you know, the issue about hunting season. So is the intent that this would be, oh, the trail would be open during hunting season? Uh, is that your only question? Well, amongst all the other ones that are already brought up, the trespassing and all that. So just as a liability standpoint, how can we control, you know, during that time of year? So the county already has an extensive tail trail network that's managed by our migration portion and parks department. We work with uh, you know Jason and on that to, to work with them about you know hunting lands and those types of things. So there's a possibility that some of it, you know, could be closed during hunting season. Depends on what the land is just. Tuesday after Columbus Day, it doesn't open until, and I'm not sure, Jackie, when does it open for snow? After when? After when? So it opens. So who's going to release that once again? Massachusetts 
Michigan, uh, let's see, Maine, along the Potomac with their million dollar homes. People even have access to their homes from their home, so they can benefit. I see people with walkers. I have seen people with um, little children pushing the, I see so many people coming into communities. They're uh, along the trails, the ice cream shops, bicycle shops, uh, tourist places. It also brings in revenue for our community. First of all, let's go back. Safety for our children. That's most important. And then go from there. But it does bring revenue. It does help benefit. It does all of these things that uh, we're talking about. So thank you for your time. Mr. Sharkman said he's been there. Has anybody else been down the railroad tracks in that area? Have you been down, I mean, during the summer? How much bug spray and head nets and everything else? This, this runs through three miles of designated wetlands. It's a Castellan swamp. I mean, people are, I understand both sides of the argument. I like exercising too. I'm just not, I'm pretty sure this isn't the right area. I mean, I can't see somebody walking down there more than once. You cannot from May, from May until August, you name it, black flies, deer flies, mosquitoes. If you get off the trail, there's going to be ticks. There's, not, there's ticks there now. And, you know, I, I, I agree with, like I said, something should be done for the youth, but I suggest you, you all walk that down down there next summer in like July and see if you still have the same idea. Thank you. And uh, 
two years ago, we had a uh, person living in a trailer next to my property. He took a snowmobile, was, wasn't registered or nothing, running all over my property. I called the sheriff's department. The officer living here come over, said he couldn't do nothing. He wouldn't even go talk to the guy. He left a snowmobile on my property, and if this is the way we're going to patrol more trails, what's the problem with the county? If we can't patrol, and on my hill land, I called once on that, they tore the posting signs down and uh, drove across the property. And he stopped the guy, he says he had insurance and registration, and that's all he's done to him. So this is more than just uh, patrolling and building more trails. We can't take care of what we got. Thank you.